What is going on guys? Today we are going to go into lesson six of my Python for Beginners full course program. Today we are going to be talking about a very powerful concept, for loops. There are two loops that we're gonna be talking about in this course. The first one is the for loop and the second one is the while loop. If you did miss any of the videos previously before this, such as conditionals back in lesson five, click here on the link above to watch that course first. I have to go make a call. If you have not already, go ahead and like and subscribe so that you're notified for each lesson that comes up every week. That's enough introduction, let's get right into it. The for loop is really helpful because what if there is something that we want to do over and over and over again until a certain condition is met? Well, a loop is gonna help us do that. For example, if you remember doing heroes and we had a list, so write out a list with some heroes in there. So I can say like Spider-Man, Hulk, Wanda, Vision, Iron Man. What the now, a couple classes ago, we talked about indexing. Indexing would have really helped us understand the for loop today. So if you haven't seen that lesson yet, go up above in this tag to watch that lesson first. Right now, we can just print out the entire list of heroes just by saying print heroes. And if I do that and hit run, you can see that it just prints out everything. But I don't want to necessarily print everything like this. And for one thing, it looks ugly because I've got all these square brackets, these quotation marks, and these commas and it does not look very nice. With indexing, remember, we can just say square brackets right next to the data we wanna print, and then we put in the index number that it's stored at. So for example, Spider-Man was at index zero, then one, two, three, four, right? So if I do heroes at zero, it just prints Spider-Man. Theoretically, I could just copy and paste and then change these index numbers to say one, two, and just keep going like that. And that is going to work nicely, as you can see. But what if I have an entire list of about 600 heroes? That would not be ideal. See, what's so hard to believe about that? Because I would have to write 600 print statements. And later on, if more heroes are added to the list, then I would have to manually add more print statements. It's not ideal, it looks messy, and that would take up a lot of space in my code. Whenever you're finding yourself repeating code over and over again like this, and maybe just changing one aspect about it, then that should ring a little bell in your head that, hey, I should probably use a loop. I'm gonna write out a for loop. I'm gonna write it out first and then I'll explain it after. So I'm gonna say for name in heroes, print name. And just with those two lines of code, it is printing out every single hero that's in my list. And now if I get more data later, it doesn't matter. I can have Ant-Man now. And if I hit run, my two lines of code is going to take care of that. So it doesn't matter if this is five heroes long or 600 heroes long, my two lines of code here will loop through it. Now let's talk about what is going on here. Right here, I'm declaring what kind of loop I'm gonna be using. Right here is the variable name that I'm gonna call each index. We'll talk more about that in a sec. And then right here is the data we want our loop to go through. So coming back to this variable, this can be named anything you want. This is actually declaring a variable just like I would here. So name equals heroes at index zero. That's exactly what it's doing actually. The first time this goes through the loop, it's going to assign this variable called name and it's gonna set it equal to index zero of heroes. So that's why when I print name right here, it is printing Spider-Man and then it's going to repeat. Now name is gonna be set to this next index, which is the Hulk. That's why when it prints name, it says Hulk. Then it repeats, name is now Wanda, and then it prints Wanda, so on and so forth. The loop will end when there's no more data. So once it saw there's Ant-Man, it's like, okay, there's no more data. It will hop out of the loop and the program will continue for the rest of your program. So I can print right here, uh, program ended. So you can see program ended was printed right after that. So that broke out of the loop and I will just delete this. That was just for demonstration purposes. And I want you to write that out and see if you can get yours to work. And remember, if I'm ever going too fast, you are welcome to pause the video, take your time, write this down, get it to work. Or you can also use YouTube's speed tools so you can speed up or slow down the video if you ever needed to. So you can call this whatever you want, this variable, but it should make sense. I see a lot of coders out there that will say for X and heroes or for I or for Y, that's actually considered as 
bad practice, you should use something that makes sense. If I said for I in heroes and print I, if I came back to my code two weeks from now, sure I wrote this code, but in two weeks, I'm not gonna remember everything I wrote. If I saw print I, I'm gonna go, what is I? Well, I'd have to run it and do some testing to see what that's gonna be. So I should do something that makes sense. So I usually ask myself, what is each index here? Well, each index is a name. So that's why I called it name. And it's usually gonna be something singular. So I did something singular. You could have also said hero because each person here is a hero. That would have worked just fine. But as you see, doesn't really matter. It will print the same. Let's try another one. We're gonna make another list. Let's call this numbers. And we're gonna set this equal to another list. And I'm just gonna list some integers in here. Now ask yourself, what do I need to change in this for loop so that I'm now looping through these numbers instead of heroes? If you said change heroes to numbers, you are correct. So I'm gonna change heroes to numbers. Already, this is going to work. This is now printing all the numbers. But here's the problem. Each of these is not a hero. So I need to change this to make sense. So I'm gonna ask myself, what are all these indexes? All these indexes is a number. So I'm gonna call this number. If I said this out loud, for each number in numbers, print that number, that should tell you exactly what's going on. And it will run the same. So very good job with that. Let's try one more, but instead of a list, we are actually going to try a string. So I'm gonna say string equals salty killer is my teacher and if i hit run well it's not looping through that so what do i need to change i need to change my data right here so instead of numbers i want it to go through string but i don't want to call this number because each of these indexes are not a number what would you name this a lot of students might say i should name this word so for each word in the string print the word but here's the problem if i hit run is it printing words no it's printing letters right it's because Remember, your for loop is going to assign this variable, no matter what it's called, to the index of the data. When it comes to a string, remember from indexing in lesson four that each index is each character. For the most part, these are all letters. So I can just call this letter. So for each letter in the string, print the letter, and that's exactly what it's doing. These are also characters. So like I said, um, so if you remember from lesson four, when we do strings, it's not just the letters, it is all the characters like the spaces, any kind of punctuation that's in there will be stored. So you could also call this character or car like that. And that would be appropriate as well because these are all characters. But for the most part, these are letters. So I'd be okay with calling these letters as well. Let's do something a little bit more fun with this. We are going to build a vowel counter. The reason I want to build a vowel counter with you is because I've had some coding interviews in the past. Most of the time when you do a coding interview for a job, the interviewer will give you a coding challenge. So in this coding challenge, I've had a couple of interviewers ask me to build this exact program. And because I've run into that a couple times, I want to show you guys how to do it. So if you ever run into this coding challenge, you've at least done it once before. So I'm gonna delete this and clear my console and we are going to create the vowel counter. And what I mean by that is I want the user to be able to type anything that they want. And when you hit run, your computer is going to calculate how many vowels you had typed out. So your computer is dumb and doesn't know what vowels are. So you as the software engineer get to decide what those vowels are. And we're just gonna make a list. I'm gonna call it vowels. Don't forget your square brackets. And I'm gonna say A, E, I, O, U. Now time for my sentence. I'm just gonna have this as my test data. So I'm gonna hard code something. So I'll say salty killer is my teacher. And that is it. So if you need to go ahead and pause the video and catch up. Now it's time for my for loop but I'm not super sure what I should loop through yet. So I'm gonna say for some kind of variable, I'll fill that out in a sec. In what? Do I want to loop through sentence or vowels? Well, I don't wanna loop through vowels. I wanna loop through sentence because I wanna see if each character is a vowel or not. So let's do this in sentence and then we'll print whatever that variable is. So like before, we did know that these were all letters because this is a string or we could call this characters. Uh, let's call it letter this time. So for each letter in sentence, print letter. I'll hit run and test that. And that is successfully working. So I'm always testing just to make sure my program is working so far. 
before I do other things to it. So I'm gonna delete my print statement. That was just to test it. I'm gonna say if letter in vowels. So if my letter that I'm currently on is in my list vowels, then I want it to print using string interpolation. Letter is a vowel, okay? So if it finds a vowel, it should say that letter is a vowel, but if it's not a vowel, I want it just to print that letter. So if we wrote that correctly, it should work like this. As you can see, all of my vowels have been identified as vowels, and so it says vowel next to it. So I'm just gonna double check, make sure that's all working properly. If you have like your S or L or T saying is a vowel, then maybe you wrote this incorrectly. So double check on that. But if yours is working the same as mine right now, then you are good to go. So you might hate me. We're actually going to delete these last three lines to test to make sure this is actually grabbing vowels. Uh, you might think that was a waste of time, but it was not. I'm glad that I tested that because because if I didn't test it and just try to write this entire program without testing it, most likely I would have made a mistake somewhere. But because I'm testing my code every two to three lines, I'm able to identify those problems ahead of time so that it doesn't build up. Since I know that's working, I want something to happen when it does find a vowel. I want it to do a little bit of simple math. I'm gonna create a variable up here called counter. You can call this whatever you want. It's not a special keyword inside of Python or anything, but I'm gonna set it to zero. And every time my program finds a letter in vowels, I want it to add the number one to counter. So I'm gonna say counter, this is renaming it, equals counter, which is zero, plus one. The first time your loop runs, it's going to look at this S. Is S in vowels? No. So it's gonna skip this part and it's gonna do nothing. That's okay, you don't have to have else. I don't want it to do anything if it finds something that's not a vowel. But when it runs in this A, it's gonna go, is A in vowels? Yes. So it's gonna run this code, counter, it's gonna be counter plus one. So zero plus one is one. Then the next time it finds a vowel, it'll be that counter, which is now one plus one. So now it's two and then three, then four, and it will just keep counting until the loop ends. So if I hit run, nothing's gonna happen because I have no print statement. So let's make a print statement. And I actually want my print statement to be all the way to the left. That means it's outside of my loop. So my print won't run until my loop is over, which is good because I don't want it to show me how many vowels there are until it's done counting. So I'm going to print using string interpolation. So I can use Python code inside of there. I'm gonna say you typed counter vowels. So if I hit run, it says you typed nine vowels. Let's see if that's true. Hopefully you didn't make too big of a sentence so that you can manually count how many vowels there are. But let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, that is correct. And I can do a couple more vowels there, 10, 11, 12, and now it says 12. So that is working properly. So there's only one more thing that we're going to add to this. I'm just going to delete my string and now I'm gonna do the input function. If you'd like to learn more about the input function, you can click on this card up above and I'll tell you all the different rules and aspects of the input function. But essentially, it's going to take the user's input. Inside of here, I'm going to let the user know it's time to type something. So I'm just gonna say, say something and I'm just gonna do backslash n Backslash N means new line. That means that we can type on a new line. If I do nothing there, it's just going to have me type up here. I don't like the look of that, so that's up to you. I usually do backslash N. Now I can say whatever I want. I can say coding is cool. And it says you typed five vowels after I hit enter. So let me double check. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. That is working properly. If you guys are at all interested, I do have one more demonstration with the for loop that is really cool. It is called the bad word filter. You can check out this card up above and this will go a little bit deeper and you can create your own bad word filter. So you can fill out a list full of any word that you want and when the user goes to type those in, it will replace those bad words with stars instead. It's really cool, go ahead and check that out. If you like these videos, please go ahead and like and subscribe. Thank you so much for coming to lesson six. Please stick around for lesson seven. I will see you guys then, happy coding.